Thank you so much for staying tuned to this channel. Welcome to yet another edition of Africa Discuss. I am Wilson on Marshall. Yes, 12 years and counting since the strongman of Libya was chased out of power, out of office, and of course killed. Some said he was murdered. Others say it was like a revolution that took place. We want to take a look at Libya 12 years after Gaddafi. How are they faring? Uh, don't forget, one of the regrets of President Barack Obama, well, as the ex President Barack Obama, was the removal of Gaddafi, the attack on that particular country, because many things went down negatively in that particular region. So many fall out, and right now the country is celebrating, so to speak, the anniversary, the 12th anniversary of the exit of uh, late Colonel Gaddafi. Libya as a country, are they doing well? The government, the people, the citizens, how are they faring compared to when Gaddafi was their leader, Hail Hathi, and of course, alive? We want to do a comparison, of course, take a look at how it affects all that African nation, because according to a report, the vision of that man was to have a united Africa. With me here in the studio to talk about this, I have a legal practitioner, a very vibrant youth public affairs commentator, human rights activist. Join me to welcome Barrister Gabriel Ehigato. Barrister, welcome to Africa Discourse. I Thank appreciate you, you coming. For, for having me. Yeah, you, Thank you so much. I, I don't know if this weather is going through your <laughs> because you don't look someone out of the country, so of that nature. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good afternoon, Nigerians. All right. 12 years after Gaddafi's demise, taking a look at Libya, what do you have to say about it? Well, uh, they said that those who refuse to make peaceful revolution impossible, mm. we end up making violent revolution inevitable. And that is the state of Libya. Now, who got the revolution? How far have Libya gone? in terms of social welfareism, in terms of uh, uh, the lifestyle of the citizens. How far have it developed? There are so much crisis in Libya. That even the Libyans even wish that the Ascon and the dead and the murdered Supreme Leader, Conde Manuel Gaddafi, would have come back. They are even wishing. There are so much crisis from economic to political to educational and, and in fact, is your, the list, are, are, you can go on and go on to analyze what is happening currently in Libya. And it, it, it's very unfortunate. When Colonel Mama Gaddafi was alive, although he had ruled Libya for, over, for about 42 years before he was murdered, you know, he set up a governance system that befits the people, that suits the people. He developed his own people. Even if there was no human rights, even if there was abuse of human rights and people could not have their own social freedom, so to speak. But the reflection of governance was very evidential in their social existence. I mean, they were free in education, they were good roads, they were basic amenities. The even so African countries are clamoring for to get, even at the 21st century, mm -hmm. as such a time as this. I mean, they were good governance. The citizens were being paid. Those that were working, inclusive of those who were not working. You can go on the list, we are just there. Mm -hmm. But since the death of Conde Mama Gaddafi, Libya existence has reduced. There's so much crisis going on there. As we are talking, elections have not been conducted there since December 2020. Uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the United Nations Special Convoy last year won. I gave a report to the United Nations saying that the two leaders, the two rival leaders controlling Libya now, need to come together to harmonize. They need to go to a round table to discuss the issues affecting the country so that there can be a conduct of an election, so that they can adapt to the constitutional basis of elections. Mm -hmm. And up to now, nothing has been done. It's that the crisis is tearing Libya apart. Part of the countries are now divided into segments being controlled by rogue world, by, mm. by militants, and, and, and what have you. Mm. So it's unfortunate that the Libya we thought, having you know, succeeded 
from the charcoals and the caging of Muhammad Gaddafi, we were able, you know, having seen freedom, we were able to do the needful. Mm. We are so fortunate that a large number of the cities, and I even pray and wish that Colonel Muhammad Gaddafi was alive. That's where we are. All right. So that is where we are right now because 12 years ago, talking about uh, uh, 2011 or January, about, there was a revolution. Take a look at Libya right now. If you cast your mind back to uh, that particular year where the revolution took place, yes. was revolution really what it? Was well, it what at a particular point in time? You talked about rogue leaders, yes. rogue nations, militias coming out to get parts of Libya, to rule parts of Libya, because like what you rightly said, yes. also there'd be no successful election. Well, for, for, for me, the revolution that took place February 17, 2011, mm. With the also called the February 17 uh, revolution, revolution. A, a, a movement. I will say it's worth it because I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I, over time, I fought for freedom of people. Mm -hmm. But in as much as the Libyans wanted that freedom at that time, they did not also plan ahead to manage the outcome, to manage the post freedom fight. Mm -hmm. So they were not make this your ground. They were not structure your ground. They were as free as the bears of the hair and did whatever they want. So it, it, it is unfortunate. It is it, really very unfortunate. Currently, as we speak, the countries are being taken over and are being divided by various groups. The United Nations have even abandoned Libya. The African Union you know, have abandoned Libya. Even the so-called NATO, with due respect, who was at the front row, NATO was a group that was at the front row of making sure that Colonel Mama Gaddafi was being captured and killed. Even NATO have abandoned the country. So Libya is like a motherless baby. And it's very unfortunate that that is where we find ourselves. Uh, all right, no, 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 over time, sir. Sorry, okay, sir. Over time, okay. sir. The policy that we run out, that we run out, that run out by uh, Mama Gaddafi, all of those policies, what for the betterment of the people? But such policies have been thrown to the back door. And no government have been able to give attention mm. to all of those policies. So we wonder Libya have become more harm to themselves than good. Uh, now, you, you said you were in support of the revolution. Yes. Now, people came out to revolt against a particular leader. And it's like, for what you rightly said, they are worse off. I'll ask you that same question again. Is that revolution really worth it? Because you said on one hand it's worth it, yes. on the other hand it's not worth it, it's because they are not prepared, prepared for what? Yeah, they, they weren't prepared for their freedom. They did that freedom, they eventually got the freedom, but they never managed the freedom. And that's what is leading to all of this crisis. That after 12 years of the aspect of a leader, Libya has not been able to find its feet. Instead, other countries are not the ones being involved. I do not also forget. Over Tessa, when there are crises in the state and other states to interfere, it is because they have interest. Mm -hmm. Libya is one of the oil producing nations in the world. And a lot of countries are being involved and interested in the oil bulk of Libya. Nobody is nobody's interested in the welfare of the citizen. Nobody is interested in the governance of the state. All they are interested in is that oil bulk that is in Libya. And that is and, and, and obvious to everybody. But I'm surprised that the strength that the United Nations, that the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the strength that the African Union put in, in driving that Conde Mama Gaddafi and freeing his, his, his citizens, I'm surprised that that strength has reduced, the enthusiasm has reduced. And we have all left Libya to live by their, <laughs> by, 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 by their wish. And it's painful, such is painful. So it's not, it's not, getting freedom is not enough. You must put policy on ground. You must put structure on ground to be able to manage the freedom as time goes on. Mm. Because if you do not do that, it's as good as losing the battle, or rather winning the war, but losing the battle. Are uh, you not saying that the people are at fault for not being able to manage their freedom, or is due to external influences that made them know to have the strategy of managing their freedom? Not necessarily external, external uh, 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 you know, influence. Although that is a factor. <laughs> but unity must come with him. When Colonel Mamak Gaddafi was, you know, removed and killed 
They form a government known as the national unity in order to see how to manage the economic policy. But between that and now, they've not, they've not been able to do anything. And the citizens are hungry. Those who live in the part where the oil is have taken over their division. Those who live where we have a lot of you know, agricultural uh, resources have also taken over the other side of the country. And then, so there's a problem. So the country, as we speak, is being managed by various mafia group, by various militant group, and what have you. So that is the, that is the problem that we are facing. So I, I feel that the United Nations need to wake up as a matter of urgency, considering the report given by the United Nations Special Convoy just last year, year December, that the two leaders, the two rival leaders, do not unite and conduct election. We may begin to have issues of partitioning. Various groups may begin to partition the nation just to build their own selfish interest. Mm. Talking about building the selfish interests of various groups in that nation, these groups they were on the ground when Gaddafi was around. What do you think gave them that boldness to start saying that they claim this region to themselves? Well, Gaddafi's structure was for all is for itself. Mm. There was no structure of the people involvement. It was a one man room. One man room. Yeah, one but man you room. said the people were enjoying the yeah, benefits yeah, of the, the one man room. room. Yeah, it was a one man room because he was the president for years. He was both in charge of the military uh, uh, commando. I was also both in charge of the parliamentary session. He was in charge of the governors. He was in charge of everything. Libya, in fact, Gaddafi was a symbol of the existence of Libya as a nation. So there was no structure to carry his people along. But he provided whatever the people needed. He gave the people his best in terms of governance. Mm -hmm. He established the social rule. He established a socialist system of governance where the government produced all that the citizens wanted. And that came into force as far, as far back as 1977. You know, I've adopted that system. Mm -hmm. But over time, sir, the system was built around itself. It wasn't built around the people, even if it favored the people. So now that he's dead, the people find it as an opportunity to exercise their right, to take whatever belongs to them, to catch up with the commonwealth of the nation. <laughs> and that's the problem. I do not also forget that even if everybody in Libya are majority Muslims, they also belong to different uh, uh, tribes mm -hmm. and groups. So the majority there over time have also been, you know, been pushed aside. Mm -hmm. And they also said there's an opportunity to come over and take, and, and take what belongs to them. Mm -hmm. And that is the problem we are facing here. Mm -hmm. So but, it's an issue of freedom to all. And everybody wants to catch whatever bears they could catch. They could catch. You know, yeah. you, you mentioned NATO, you mentioned you, and you mentioned African Union. You said that the zest and the zeal by which they used to chase Gaddafi exactly. before he was killed, exactly. that it has dwindled. Yes. So what's the reason behind that? Well, I think they are years over when. By that what? Maybe by crisis of other nations currently. Because you take a critical political analysis and a closer microscopic view of the crisis, you know, in Africa, in African nation per se, you will find that it has even increased within the past five years or ten years. I'm not even talking about the Arab offspring, you know, uprising and what have you. But when you look at it critically, from Sudan to even to our own Nigeria. To just name it, the crisis has been there. Cameroon also had their own crisis. So over time, Africa created more crisis for the United Nations and its own, uh, 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 you know, the African Union. So they, have, they, they need to also concentrate on other African nations. And that's one of the reasons, uh, 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 you know, Libya has been lacking the, uh, 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 behind. I don't also forget, as I said earlier, the powerful nations, Powerful state seems to also have interest in the other block of Libya alone. Libya. Because there is no country who will exchange its military courage for anybody without an interest in the country. The United Nations will on over time, even if I criticize on over time. I will say it again. United Nations, oh sorry, the America, for example, cannot fight an interest without their own interest being protected. Mm. Over time, they show that. They have shown that. They have shown that in, in Iraq and, and what have you. So 
That is the problem, the selfishness from members of the United Nations. If we, be, if, we, if we take our soldiers there for peacekeeping, what are we going to gain in return? So I think, to me, I think these are the two reasons why Libya has been abandoned over time. All right, what about the abandonment of Libya over time by these great bodies? It gave reasons, but still, you get to realize that Libya do have oil blocks, all right? And like what you talked about, that some of these rogue leaders, this militant, some are in charge of the military, others of militia group, they are in charge also of this oil block, and they're not willing to really give up their sovereign thing, so to speak. Now, does it mean that these external factors are really the one causing the trouble that they're experiencing right now in that country? Well, if there are to be a united government that be existing in Libya, I'm not sure we'll still be talking about this whole crisis. But because there's no established government, there's no established authority, and everybody are on their own. So people see as a free will to do whatever they want to do. So the government of Libya must be an established government, must be a constituted authority that can take over the leadership, the sole leadership of the nation. If not, I don't see the military group, you know, revoking back the oil block they say. I, I, I don't see that. I do not also forget that these people do not exist. There are powers behind them. They have ammunitions. Over time, there have been reports of qualification of, 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 of arms, mm. you know, in the Libya uh, 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 country. So, a lot of work needs to be done. It, it's not just a government that needs to come into power alone. It's a government that needs the involvement, mm. the word involvement in capital letters, that needs the involvement of the United Nations. Mm. Because Libya is a nation who has just been wounded from a war. So I, I think that the United Nations needs to put the heads together. Mm. And we all need to give attention to Libya. If not, we are going to have a greater crisis. Just as the, uh, the special ever said, mm. that is see Libya be partitioned. Partitioning of Libya? Yes, of Libya. And we'll divided into, into groups. We will come back to you after this breakdown goes, because it's all about Libya 12 years after the demise of late uh, Colonel Gaddafi. We'll be right back after the short break. <laughs> Thank you so much for staying tuned. If you just joined us, this is Africa This Course. And we are taking a look at the country, Libya, 12 years after Gaddafi's demise. And for what you can pick up from this discussion with Barrister Gabriel Ehigato, all is not well with that country, Libya. And right now, they're talking about conducting an election this year, despite all they've done in previous years for the past 12 years of conducting an election to no avail. This year, the prime minister of the party is saying that this year will not pass Libya by. There must be an election. This is happening. Well, only time we tell there will be an election. He said 2023 oh, no. is like sacrosanct yeah, for Libya. Yeah, only time we tell. And there better be an election. Because I think Libya is, is still more on the edge than expected, even if it will fall off. There better be an election. Because from 2020 to now, the level of qualification of harms have increased. The level of gastarism mm -hmm. and, 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 and mafia rule have increased. The level of you know, militancy have increased. Things that we are never in existence during the tenure of Colonel Mama Gaddafi, and in existence. So even Libyans are tired. I'm sure this is not what they wish for themselves when they finally remove Colonel Mama Gaddafi. So to me, there must be an election. But such an election will be an election that is free and fair. Such an election will be an all inclusive election. Such an election will be an election being involved by all the trash of Libya. Mobile election has been involved and monitored, if possible, conducted by the agent of the United Nations. I keep stressing the United Nations. But some because are they saying, were part and parcel yes, of the dismantle of Colonel Mama Some Gaddafi. are saying you bring the United Nations is to cause more confusion. After all, a segment of those leadership, they are yes. against the UN saying they want to cause the trouble. 
in the first place. <laughs> but they were there from the beginning. And don't forget, they used to have a UN-backed government until they were toppled. Exactly. By resistance. Exactly. And then they're trying to balance the government. I mean, with all these things on the ground, you think they want to see the, 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 let, 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 the reason why the United Nations needs to be involved in this election, is, apart from, from clarity's sake, from beefing affair, they also need to witness the election. We cannot leave Libya to be on its own, you know, to commence a state of personal existence. Mm -hmm. All interest group. Yeah, there was interest group. As a matter of fact, it was the interest of various group that led to that revolution. Not necessarily Libya's vessel. Mm -hmm. Because the world saw it as, you know, imprisonment for life. They saw it as slavery for life. And the whole world were against Mama Gaddafi. You can agree on me with that, with, with me on that. Mm -hmm. So the United Nations must also be involved in monitoring this election. The NATO must be involved in this election. I'm not saying that you sponsor a candidate, but they should monitor. But they've been accused of sponsoring a candidate. It will only be like that. And that has been the issue right now. It will now. always be like that. It's, there's no place where you won't have that. I mean, there are people, you can't tell me in Libya, you don't have those who want to form a Kaba government. Who want to form a government of the few. Who want to form a government of serving interest and self benefit. There must be such class of people. And you cannot take that away. There exists here and there. There exists in no formation of life. But the United Nations must monitor. The election observer, international election observers must also monitor this election. And another thing is this. Is Libya actually ripe for election? Are they ready to lay down their hands? That is 12 years later. Yes, are they ready to embrace democracy? Because over time, when you look at the training of Libya, they don't understand the ethics, the notes, the vocations that guide democratic practice. So it'll be very difficult for all of a sudden, a nation that used to be known for military, you know, uh, brutality. Such nature is now adopting a democratic uh, approach. It will be very difficult. But with time, I think that we catch up. Mm, with time. Question is how long will that time? Because now we're talking about 12 years now. They're still grappling. They're still grappling. They're still trying to find their feet when you talk about democracy. And of course, former President of the United States of America, uh, Barack Obama, said the one thing he regretted in Africa. Uh, in fact, they said for this year we allow the most be election in Libya, take it on Libya. But we still have some strong men in Libya saying that their interests must be met. How do you think all these interests will really, really be met? Because somebody occupying Tripoli, Benghazi, you just name it, everyone is claiming cities, claiming oil blocks, claiming oil installations. Do you think they want to give up all this for there to be one of the prophecy of Libya being fragmented among this warlord? Is it going to come true? Like what you rightly said, only time would definitely tell. Barista, thank you so, so much for coming on today's show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate me, a wonderful analysis. Thank you so much. Libya, 12 years after Gaddafi, the story continues. Next week, Monday, God willing, we'll do it again. Bye for now.